This is so cool. <laughs> okay, how are you doing? This is my first time in, at Rootstech, so I'm very excited to be here. How many of you have taken a DNA test before? Raise your hand. Okay, so most of you. So you don't need 101, you need like 202 or something. Okay, so in DNA tests, we can do basically, as you, some of you already know, we have kind of like two types of tests. We can test unilinear markers, such as the Y chromosome and the mitochondria. These are the early tests that we used to see about seven, eight years ago, and kind of like the industry shifts into tests that test the autosome. tests for the autosomal DNA. The autosomal DNA, this is the part that you get equally from your father and your mother. And it basically, we have this basically 22 sets of chromosomes and this is what we test. Now, we have in general, how many of you heard about whole genome sequencing? Raise your hand. Okay. And we also have tests that focus using chips what we offer here at my heritage. Now, what, how does it work, this chip test? We take your DNA from the saliva sample that you gave us, and then we break the DNA into very small pieces. We throw the DNA onto a chip, and we don't measure everything in your genome. We focus on about half a million, 700,000 markers in your genome, and this is what we report back. Now you ask, how can you tell us quite a lot about the genome just from testing 700,000 markers. And the way that we do that is that we cheat. We go to markers, the 700,000 markers, that are all, we already know that this is, these are the places that are highly polymorphic in the human population. We know that we will find differences. If I right now go to each one of your genome, and I go to, what's your name? Jacques. Jacques genome and we're going to compare my DNA versus Jacques' DNA, nucleotide after nucleotide, we will see that only one out of 1,000 nucleotides, we have a difference. So when we look at your genome, basically, your genome is highly similar to each other. This is great. This is what makes us human. But there are differences in each one genome that gives each one this, like, person, the unique characteristics of this person, okay? How many differences we have between two individuals, by the way? Do you know? On average? Between us? We have about three to four million differences, depending on your ethnicity. This is what we have between the, the genome of two individuals. So what we do, we go and we test from this about three, four million differences, we test 700,000 places that are highly polymorphic and there's places maximize our power to say something about you, about your ethnicity, about your matches. It's not comprehensive, but it gives us quite a lot of information, and it's quite what is right now most, I say, cost-effective to get, okay? So this is how we, we take this, your DNA, put it on a chip, and we get the results, and we analyze them. Okay, so what can we offer by looking at your DNA? What can we do? We can say where are you from. How do we do that? How we do we know where are you from? So what's the how do we do this analysis? So we take your genome and we look at these differences and then we go to a panel. People that we know where they are from. And in my heritage we started this beautiful initiative that we go and we collect the genome of five thousand individuals from all over the world. We have people from we go from people in, in places in Africa, in East West Asia, and we collected their DNA. And right now this is in the process. But we have, an, an, our approach is to grow this reference panel with many more populations. And then we take your genome, and we try to decompose your genome and to see which populations you match and what percentages. And this is kind of like a process that I like to compare it kind of like to when you eat a good meal in a restaurant and you try to understand what the chef used to make this meal. Okay, so we think like you eat this like very good meal and maybe there is like a good steak 
I think the chef used some butter on the steak. Very similar process mathematically to what we do when we take your DNA and we try to decompose it to these different populations. Each company has their own panel to decompose to different populations. So it kind of like provides you a different lens and the way that we can now see and report your ancestry. So this is one part of what we can do with DNA information. Another thing that we can do with DNA that right now we have it uh, on my heritage is that we give you answers about matches. So let's just kind of like orient ourselves. If you had a monozygotic twin, an identical person, how much of your genome do you share with this person? 100%, that's the right answer. Your brother, how much do you share with your brother or sister? 50% with your parent? 50% as well, right? We, get, we just get half set of the chromosomes. Grandmother and, and, and uh, your um, grandfather? 25%, half sib, 25% as well. Avancular relationships, 25%. First cousin, 12.5%. Second cousin, now it goes to three point something percent, and then it comes like exponentially decay. So you see that as we go to longer, longer relationships, the percentage that we share is very small. But there is a trick that we use to actually get you these very large, distant uh, cousinships. What we do, we don't just look at your entire genome and your similarity, we look at segments in your genome that you match to another person. Because these segments, they are break very slowly over time. So if we see a stretch in your genome, a tiny stretch, but this stretch matches between me and Jack, we know that we have a shared ancestor. And then what we do, we basically apply a mathematical model and we count the number of stretches, this number of segments that you share with different people in our database. We look at the length and the number, and then we try to basically kind of like reverse engineer this genealogical path and suggest for you what is the most likelihood relationships that we have between you and the other person, okay? Now, the thing is that it, it becomes quite hard after to detect after five cousins. Basically, the fifth cousin after that becomes very hard to get, and you also have to be a bit lucky, because at this point, sometimes you don't share the DNA with this person. You are related genealogically. Maybe you have even a pepper trail of this person. You can trace a common ancestor. But this person is so distant that with this inheritance of the chromosomes, you just were not lucky enough to get a DNA segment to this person. In this case, it's very helpful to have if you have your first cousins that are also participating, also have their DNA. Maybe if you have your parents, maybe if you can still get your, the DNA of your grandparents and, and get them, then you can still get a match with this person, you become more and more lucky and get these matches. So this is kind of like the very basics of DNA. Other things that we can tell you from DNA that we don't do right now, but something that things that we do think about is to think about what DNA can tell you about health. Okay? And we know that many diseases are actually encoded. We have predispositions in our DNA. But the main thing to remember is that most diseases, it's not something that we know that if you have this mutation or if you have these mutations, you will get the disease. We just know that they will increase or decrease the likelihood of your disease. And let me somehow like, have, like prove it to you that we, for some things we cannot predict perfectly. Think about identical twins, maybe people that you know. These identical twins, they look alike, but still they don't usually suffer from the same diseases, despite the fact that they have the same DNA. Maybe they have different heights. So for many things, although we have the perfect kind of like clone of the person, we cannot fully predict the, the, these outcomes or these predispositions from the DNA, okay? So we can always give you some at least some chances, but not that, oh, you're definitely going to be to have this disease. Which I think, by the way, it's great, because I don't want to know what disease I will suffer, I just want to know things that are more at risk, so I can manage maybe these risks in the future. Questions about DNA? Yes, Jacques? The future, 
um, I mean, this field is developing very rapidly. Very yeah. Tell us about what has developed over the past five years or so and what trends do you see? Yeah. So I think kind of like there are technological developments and there are some algorithmic developments in DNA. We have now, so five years ago, so I, I five years ago I started my lab, I was at the lab at MIT. We had to sequence a human genome. It cost $40,000 to sequence a human genome. We had to run this array that now you buy from, from us for 79 bucks. To run this array on a person cost in the order of $300-$400. And today basically the cost reduction in the technologies is faster than the cost reduction of computing power. Think about your computer, think about a computer 10 years ago. Even about you know the cell phones, right? How they become like so powerful in the last few years. The cost of DNA technologies is much faster than these technologies. And this means we need to employ basically kind of like the, the best programmers at my heritage to be able to handle all this amount of information that people never saw before. This large databases of, of DNA. So this is one thing that we see in the field. Another thing that we see in the field is this better data sets and better algorithms. For example, I was part of a project that went and sequenced individuals from different corners of the world. Only 300 individuals, right? At MyHeritage, we do it with 5,000 people, right? But this was another project that just a decade ago was something that wild dreams. We have better algorithms now, scientific algorithms, to go and to find you these matches. These algorithms are getting better and better, and we can reduce the number of false positives. I know some companies, they love to tell you, oh, like, we can find you all these false cousins, whereas if you just count all your false cousins, you don't have many, so many people like that. Mm -hmm. We are getting better and better when we give you a match with DNA to tell you that we feel like confident about this match. And you know what, about this match, it's kind of like more speculative. We want you to see this match right now. We cannot fully say that this is match, but we may, there is some certainty. So we kind of like stratify this information and give you something that is more accurate, tell you the things that we don't know. And this is something that the field is, is going towards. Yes, please. So if we did a test today, in five years from now, yeah. uh, we're part of the database. Would it be, a, and the databases will have expanded during that yeah. period of time, would it be important to go back and do another test in another five years? Could we go back and test for the databases in five No. Would it be important for us to do a second test in five second years? Test. Yeah. Very good. So the question was, if these technologies are changing so fast, would, do, will we need to have another DNA test in five years? And the first is that when you give your DNA to my heritage, we retain the DNA, the molecules themselves. So it doesn't involve all this like cumbersome process of sending you the sample and swabbing. So we might be able to use what we already have. But kind of like in the future, the future might involve whole genome sequencing. Maybe done maybe 10 years from now down the road. It's not that we have any concrete plans, by the way. This is just an overview of the technology, right? And it might give you a bit more information, but I think right now you get quite a lot already from the information that we collect. But who knows, right, if technology is getting better and better with that. More questions for DNA 101 or 202, advanced questions. Yes, please, yeah. So if, if, I, gave, if I gave my DNA today, um, and say my husband gave his DNA, would it be important for our children to do it too? I mean, Terrific yeah. question. Yeah. So the question is, if I gave my DNA, my husband gave his DNA, what is the value of testing our kids for their DNA? Very good question. So the thing is that you give your kids not your entire DNA. You can't like it's kind of like a, a deck of cards and we're going to sample 50% of them and you give it to your kids. And your husband does the same process with his deck of cards or his DNA. You give it to your kids. And when you give basically, so your kids basically will have the if you have different ancestries, you and your husband, your kids will also get a composition of different ancestries. Not essentially that it's like 50-50%, right, that just cut your results by half, because it might be like mixed differently. So this will allow you to refine the ancestry of your kids, 
matches, it will not improve matches at all, right? Because the matches already, you have better matches than your kids. The health consequences are important because you only share 50% of the predisposition of diseases with your kids on average. So this will allow you to get your kids to get more accurate information about their health once this test will be also available. Yes, please. So with that, if my brother and I were tested, could we possibly be shown from different countries if we get 50% from each of our parents? Or would we have exactly the same country? So the question was, if I and my brother were tested, are we going to get the same exact results about our ancestry or not? And the answer is no. You will see different results because maybe your mother, let's say that your mother is has some admixture, let's say Northern European and some, some small Italian DNA. But this Italian DNA passed to you but not to your brother. You will see, hopefully, we'll see this Italian signal in your genome but not in the genome of your brother. Okay? Does that answer the question? Yeah? Okay. Yes, please. Do we do a DNA? Compare, Compare DNA? Compare. Compare. Ah, from here. The, so we at MyHeritage, we don't support that. But the technology in general, can you get DNA from here? The answer is that if is that, yes, you can DNA. DNA from here. It, it's something that right now we currently don't support. It's, it's not so easy, it's much more difficult to do that. But maybe with time, technology will get also better and easier to do that and offer it in some price that will be like also make sense for you to do that. Yes? There are many companies that do this. Um, so for those uninitiated to this field, how would they know what would they get from one versus another? Or is it very similar? I cannot comment on other companies, just don't know what, what is the product. So I just you know, Maybe other people have some experience and you can speak with them. More questions? All right. Thank you very much. I'm going to stay here if you have more questions. Thank you.